There are all sorts of ways to go wrong in Grounded, especially at the very beginning when you're still learning how to survive in a world of tiny terrors. So now that the full 1.0 version is hitting Xbox and PC Game Pass, we thought we'd lay out a few helpful pointers for surviving the first 10 days. With the release of Grounded 1.0, players are finally going to be able to find out the rest of the game's story and figure out how our heroes got all shrunken down in the first place. But this is also a survival game, so it's worth spending those early days gearing up rather than just plowing straight through the story missions. And that starts with finding somewhere to call home. You can build your base pretty much anywhere in the yard, so it's important to scout out a good location. Proximity to food or clean water is handy, while being near a field station will make it easy for you to do research into new crafting recipes. If you're looking for something with a view of the water, the pond is surrounded by smooth rocks, which are great for building on, especially if you stay around the part near the oak tree where there are far fewer aggressive insects. Most importantly though, you want to build somewhere that's not going to be immediately overrun with enemies. Nothing worse than laying the last twig on your dream home, only to realize you put it right next to a wolf spider den. Nightmare. The best idea is to build up, setting your base on top of a log, tree stump, or any other elevated location, and then using stairs, scaffolding, and ladders once you've unlocked them to keep reaching for the sky. Or if you're feeling even quirkier, you can actually build on top of the baseball. It's one of the first major landmarks you discover, and its height means that you won't have to worry about ants barging in to steal your supplies, making it an ideal early game location. Knowledge is power out in the yard, so you'll want to spend some time at the various field stations found across it. By bringing items here to be analyzed, you can unlock new recipes and seriously upgrade your inventory. So you basically want to analyze everything you can get your hands on. However, this is one place where the time management portion of Grounded comes into play. The resource analyzer has a bit of a cooldown after each use, so you'll want to plan accordingly. Fire through the basic stuff like pebblets first and then move on to analyzing more obscure items. And pretty soon you'll have more recipes than Gordon Ramsay. As you'll learn in the game's tutorial, the lean-to is a hugely important bit of kit because it allows you to set your respawn point. Since you'll need to hike back to wherever you were felled to reclaim your backpack, making sure you come back to life at a convenient location will save you a whole lot of unnecessary legwork. The lean-to also allows you to sleep right through the nighttime portion of the game if you want to. In some ways though, that would be a shame since you'll miss some of the gorgeous sights Grounded has to offer. I mean, the sight of fireflies glittering in the dark is pure eye candy, especially in 4K. But if you just find the whole nighttime vibe too creepy, you have the option of skipping straight through to the next day. I mean, it's your game after all, you can play it any way you want. And this does have the added benefit of helping you avoid nocturnal predators like the wolf spider, which could make surviving those first 10 days a good bit easier too. Your stomach may now be very tiny, but you'll still need to keep it filled with food, otherwise your health will start to drop and you'll eventually die of starvation. Bad times. An easy solution is to start hunting down the smaller, less dangerous insects like aphids that you find in the grasslands or the grubs over in Oak Hill. There are also a wide variety of other snacks which you'll find scattered around the yard, stuff like apple bits and mushrooms which are ideal for taking the edge off your appetite. But unless you want to spend half your game time hunting for fungi, it's important to get your hands on some proper meals by figuring out how to cook the raw food you find. Fortunately, you can get access to the recipe for the roasting spit early on. All you have to do is grab a sprig and take it back to a field station to be analyzed. With the recipe in hand, it's a simple matter of grabbing more sprigs, four peblets, and three dried grass chunks, all of which are super common resources. And voila, you've got yourself a roasting spit. And as an added bonus, cooked meals also offer a variety of buffs. Cook that grub meat into a grub roast and it will also replenish your HP. The jerky rack is an even better option, allowing you to preserve food for the long haul, but requires bombardier parts which you'll only be able to get by taking on a bombardier beetle, and that is absolutely not something you want to do at this early stage. But man cannot live on bug meat alone, so you'll also need to find something out there to quench your thirst. The dewdrops, which you'll find clinging to blades of grass all over the yard, will do the trick just fine, although you'll want to stick to the clean stuff since the nasty water will make you sick and massively increase your hunger rate, and also because it's just super gross. But an even better option is to track down the five juice boxes spread across the yard. This tasty tipple is a super efficient way to stay alive, 
filling up both your thirst and hunger meters at the same time. Three of them are in the grasslands, one in the left section of the flower beds, another one over by Spade Gulch, and one more next to the mystery machine. Then there's one in the branches of the hedge and another near Rake Rock Point in the haze. For the thinking gamer, one of your earliest goals should be to dig up some grubs from Oak Hill and use their parts to build yourself a canteen. Fill it up with juice and you'll be able to carry 24 hours worth of sustenance around with you in a fashionable bug-based container. Once you've got your basic needs met, you can start to explore a little more freely, gathering resources, learning new recipes and crafting all sorts of incredible stuff. What you want to focus on is really entirely up to you and what sort of play style you prefer. But if staying alive is amongst your general priorities, then an excellent early shout is the acorn armor. Made mostly from acorn shells and crude rope, this gear is robust enough to keep you safe while you're still refining your combat skills. Put the whole set together and you'll unlock the uncrackable bonus, which increases the number of times you block repeated attacks. Altogether, the acorn armor can help make your first few days feel a lot less panicky and might help you avoid an unnecessary death or two. So you'd be silly to ignore it. <laughs> Nuts even. Grounded's combat system has been impressively fleshed out over the course of its early access phase, providing players with a whole host of options when going mano a buggo. And if you're looking to add another string to your bow early in the game, the best option is to add some strings to a bow. The sprig bow will take a bit of legwork to procure all the necessary components. Sprigs, gnat fuzz, and plant fiber are all pretty abundant across the map, though you will need to craft the latter into crude rope to make your bow, which will be totally useless unless you have something to shoot from it, so you'll also have to go hunt down some mites for their mite fuzz before tracking down one of the thistle plants that have sprouted up across the yard and grabbing a bunch of its needles. Yeah, it's a lot, but the bow is a real game changer. Being able to attack enemies from above or afar is so much safer, especially once you start taking on the game's tougher enemies. Not that you necessarily want to go too far up the food chain in your first 10 days. Okay, so now you've got yourself decked out in the finest threads an acorn tree can provide and you're firing off arrows like a teeny tiny Legolas, confidence is no doubt high. But you still might want to take a rain check when it comes to some of the bigger bugs. We previously mentioned the likes of wolf spiders and bombardier beetles, both of which are likely to put you in a very early, very small grave if you mess with them at this point. Same goes for the likes of ladybugs and bees, both of which are going to give you a really hard time if you're still working with tier 1 weapons. You should also be careful of ants. Worker ants won't attack you unless you attack them first or try to steal their eggs. And individually, they're pretty easy to take down. The problem is that they can call on their buddies to try and swarm you, including the much more powerful soldier ants. So unless you can isolate them or you're confident of making a quick getaway, maybe wait until you've got some quality gear before you up the ante. Really, you want to go picking as few fights as possible during these first 10 days while you get yourself appropriately geared up. But don't worry, there will be plenty of epic encounters to come. The great thing about Grounded is that it gives you a huge sandbox of a world to play in, including an actual box of sand. There's no right or wrong way to go about things, but by following these hints during your first 10 days, you should find yourself in a very nice position to go out and take on even the creepiest of crawlies. Feel free to hand down any of your own hard-earned wisdom through the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for more sagely Xbox advice in the future. Bye!